see you pop in. I'm Captain Eddie Castle and welcome to my shop. I'm here and I'm just trying to clean up a few things. I suited up, I put the, vet, the, the smock on because really I need a new one. Uh, but it keeps my shirts clean and keeps the uh, keeps management a little bit happy. I'm going to talk to you about a few things. Get the glasses cleaned up here. Then I can see what I want to tell you. There it is. I want to tell you that you got to watch. It's one of those summer days in early August when you want to piddle in the shop, but the humidity with the air on is at 90%. Yeah, you can almost slice a chunk out and mail it to somebody. Man, it's a damp out here. But it's what we live in, South Louisiana. I'm playing around some ideas and some uh, this and that, and I want to turn another pen. And I'll show you a little something about it. Maybe later on I'll get it done today. But when I came out, I got to thinking about what was the problem the other day when I was turning pens. The problem was I didn't think it all the way through. Yeah, let me go on a wax here. I didn't think about cutting and slicing with the tools. So just now I put a fresh new edge on my uh, roughing gouge and that's one good pass across the grinder when I've got the Blackhawk set up the right setting. Oh, the sound effects. And then it put a nice clean cutting edge. Now remember when I cut on that roughing gouge, I want to have some teeth on that edge to grab that wood and pull it away. Then after I get it roughed out, I want to get out my skew. Well, that's where I screwed up at. I was not paying attention to how dull the skew had gotten. And when you see me sitting here like this, I've got my diamond stone. A cute term on diamond stone. i got my diamond and I've got my blade and it's right here in front of me not down on a bench and all that and it's where I can sit and actually look be kissing that edge that I go down no heavy use no no muscle movement heavy muscle movement and all that so I'm just gonna lap up that edge a little bit what I end up with is a very very sharp 25 degree total egg rake on the skew. That is a cutting tool. That is the one I want. I don't have to go back to the grinder. I don't need to go to the belt sander or the Excelsior or whatever they call those things. It's all right here. It's in my hands. It's in my control. And that's as sharp as I need it to be. Now if I need a sharper, I'm going to think twice about what I'm doing here. I just came out to have a little fun get out of the house because of the weather and stuff and I came out and I found notes, piles of notes that I've been bringing out for the last couple of months and this one's dated March it's a tell them about SWAT well SWAT is this coming the weekend we're at uh, the 18th and 19th of August um, SWAT starts on 24th or 25th this it's this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in Waco, Texas. <clears throat> I do this a lot, but I got to tell you that it's one of the finest, if not the finest, but the nicest, and that's a guarantee fact, nicest wood turning program in the world. Really. So if you're not going, you can kind of make plans to make it to SWAT. It's uh, it's well worth the trip. It's centered on, it's one of those things where they're, they're centralized in the, in the States. Oh, I got the hiccup, something terrible. And you can get there. And it's a football town, so there's a lot of hotels, a lot of campgrounds, a lot of places to park and stay, and I think some of the better barbecue in that part of the world. But that's coming up. So if you need more details, go to their website, swatturners.org. S-W-A-T-U-R-N-E-R-S dot org. And look at it. 
it's interesting. Then I can tell you about what turning some pens, right? All right. I had a guy ask me, can he do some pens without using kits and would use them for the Freedom pens? Yes. You can do kitless pens. That's what I'm doing here today. Kitless pens. Why? <clears throat> because I'll spin these things out. They cost me nine cents. If I'm, if I'm not watching the sales counter at Wally World, it might go to 12 cents. Um, somebody sits at the dining room table with us and they pick up one of my pens. Oh, I like this. Put it in your pocket. I'm quick to give it away. Put it in your pocket. Enjoy it. It's a gift from me. It's to you. Why? Because I can. Guess what you can do? You can do the same thing. All right? So think about having a little fun with this stuff when you do it. Um, I made reference a while back about getting the AAW Woodturner magazine. <clears throat> I'll be straight and flat with you, but I got no budget for this. Really. When I had a brain injury, I went to disability. That was it. I can't focus and do a job. I have problems with organizing a day and getting things done in a fashion. Um, I can make a note. Then I got to make a note to tell me, look at the notes. And you think it's that old crap? Well, it is part of old crap, but it's part of my brain got damaged. And it hasn't recovered. And since that didn't recover, a couple of things have kind of went south. Let's not talk about that. Uh, but early August or so, I had a bout with congestive heart failure because I'm very proactive to salt in food. And one of our major escapes is to be over golf and get a hamburger or a salad or something. And I'm down to where I can get one hamburger a week. I'm cooking a meatloaf right now in a crock pot. It looks pretty good. But I want to get that magazine. I cannot pay $50 a year for a magazine. I'm looking for is one of your old ones. Yeah, you got one. It's not doing anything. It's collecting dust. You put it right over here. If it came out the bathroom, it's okay with me. But send it to me. My address is at the end of the video. Right? And I was recently talking about Vince Welch. Vince is like my partner in crime. Vince has Vince's Wooden Wonders. There's no E in the word wooden. Vince's Wooden, W-O-D-N, Wonders. All right? <clears throat> Vince sells abrasives. He asked me to stop calling it sandpaper. What does he call it abrasives? Vince gets a little finger up when he does it. Abrasives. All right. <laughs> the thing is, it's not sandpaper anymore. It's not. He's got new products that's woven. He's got new products that have got glass or grit or granite or something or, or, or a harder surface added to it. He's got papers that work underwater. You don't have to go into water. The paper can be in the water. But if you go into water and turn water, I want to see a picture of it, all right? But he's got all these different formulas of abrasives. I like that, abrasives. Because Vince knows what he's doing, and he knows what you're doing. So you want to buy a gimmick or a trick? Go to the other guy. You want to buy something to do your job and do it right? Vince Welch. Vince's Wooden Wonders. I'm, a ma I'm magical. Watch this. Boom. Vince's Wooden Wonders. Oh, a little bit crooked. There it is. That's where you want to go. All right. Now, I got a something one of you guys sent me, and y'all are so great about this. You send me parts, pieces, things you turned. Um, a guy, no, I wanted to get back in the turning, got my leg fixed again. Sent me a whole box of wood, all cut up. I got little pen blanks, big pen blanks, bottle stoppers, bowl stoppers, all kinds of parts and pieces. And the intention was to put it in the shop. It stopped halfway and it got moist. Wow, that's a waste, isn't it? It spalted! <laughs> yes, it did. And I got some gorgeous blanks out of it. 
So I'm going to chuck up one of those and make a freedom, uh, sort of freedom pen, it's an Eddie pen that I can give it away. Stick around. I got to start all over again, which is no problem because it means I get to play a little more in the shop. I'm going to drill a pen blank and make a pen. It's a fun little pen. Um, not all projects can be fun, but they're all a learning experience and it helps you get your tool usage down right. And when you get that down right, all your work gets better, really. But I got a 532nd by 6 inch drill bit I picked up at MSC Direct. And it works very, very good. But I can get it at a machine supply house nearby that sells uh, welding, machining supplies, and things like that. And that will have that bit. No magic to the bit. It's just the length and width, 532nd. I want to line up one end with my steady rest here. Yeah, then go to the drill bit. How about that? To drill press. Then I'll line up the other end and press the let's go button. Then I can easily. Get to the center. And slowly push this on. Why? Not a lot of muscle, a lot, not a lot of work on it. Alright? I don't need that steady rest after this. Back it up. Then I'm going to clean it out. Only one about three quarters of an inch. As you can see, I'm in the center. And I'm going to push it on by hand. Another inch clean it. Another inch clean it. Don't overdo it because you generate too much heat. You can make that bit hook. You don't want it to hook. You don't want it to come out the side. Think this is a great pain? No, it's not. What you have to do to get the thing to turn. Now I want you to see something. Look how true it's running. Can you see that? You have to see that to understand it. Look how true it's running. It's like magic. Once I get it drilled and I'm ready to go, I can bring my tailstock up and I'm not, here's the deal, tailstock is released. No pressure anyway at all. This is spinning on the drill bit. Then I can bring up the steady rest, right? I got my little spinning steady rest and I can steady on that one point. And that's where I want to be. Why? Because if I force this to the center, I could force that hole to be crooked. I don't want it crooked. I want it right in the center. And I've managed to do that for the very special purpose of not forcing it with a drill press. Now, shielding up, I won't cut without the shield being up, is a doctor's thing. Okay? Shields up. Roughing out. Ever seen something cut so sweet? Good wood, good speed. It's a happy speed. It's not super speed. And a good sharp tool. And I used it right. That's where it comes that's where it comes in there. Moved it around a little bit because I want to tell you what we're going to do. And oh yeah, by the way, when I say shields up, I mean put my shield down in front of my face. Alright? <clears throat> I had a guy said I'm confusing about that. You think it's confusing there? Be here. All right. 
I'm about to have it rounded off. I got a flat spot here, and but I'm controlling the piece, and it's running very smooth. And I want that to happen. And the way I drilled it, and I'm going to get on that bandwagon, okay? The way I drilled it, this piece is running very true. So I'll shields up. Turn up some feet here. Where am I heading? Funny shape. I think you'll like this. It's all with the rough and skew. Rough and gouge. Oh. Step over to the skew. Little bitty light cuts will get it there. I want to shift this up a little bit for you, all right? Now, at any time now, you can get you on the secret as to where I'm going. That's a funny shape. I'm going to pull out a, oh, a little specialty tool I get from David D Way Tools. And it's a beating tool. It's nothing elaborate, but it's handy. I'm going to put a little bead on this end down here. That's where I'm heading for. I think you see where we're going. That's the top of the bat. The handle, the nub. I got it shaped up. Got a little bit of something here. I'm going to straighten it up with a skew a little bit. There you go. Nice slice. Clean it up a little bit. Got a little ridge right here. You see the beauty of doing these little projects? I've used my roughing gouge to get me a basic shape. I used my scooter to get a final shape. I used a little bead, little bead tool to get this end. I'm going to put a round on the end of it. All those on a little 12 cent ink pen. I'm not sure where it went wrong, but I was putting a finish on and showing this to you. But I cranked it up, I got it to my 400 grit. Then I got it my EMO2 by Starbond. That's it right there, that's what I'm using for a finish. EMO2. And then I dripped it on and spread it out using this blue paper towel. Never a cloth. And I did about four coats. Now, that's drying as we're talking. So I could stay here and, and put 15, 20 coats, 30 coats on it. I don't see a need in it. It's drying. I want to take a little scruffy pad. 
knock off any burnishes and all that might be on it. Just buff down some stuff. You don't you don't want it to be slick. You really want it to be slick. Right? And then I come back and put a finish coat on. And again, I'm still using that one little strip, that one little rip of blue paper towel from the Home Depot. I just caught on the light was on the wrong side, and you couldn't see it, so I put it, put the light on the right side. Looked at that piece. That's it. It's dry. I'm going to do one more coat on it. Watch that thing sparkle. Now the entire time it took me to put the finish on this was about a minute. And I use super glue because it's very resistant to hand oils and it's it's a very durable finish. So I can do this. It's, it's running right now, but I can stop it anytime I wish. Cap up my super glue. That's the finished product. A couple of safeties. I told you about wearing the shield when you when you're cutting. I'm a little bit not so about that since one of the doctors who saved my life told me that. If I get another traumatic brain injury, y'all might only be watching reruns. I really don't understand what he means by that, but um, I have to take care of it. You do too. And being a hero is no hero. And by the way, if you send me a picture of one of your wounds on Facebook, Eddie Castle, you're gone. I will delete you so quick. I don't need to see how you messed up. I messed up enough in my career. I don't need to see it. So, I've got my nitro gloves. This, it's, it's, this is not a mandatory thing, but I don't have the build up on my fingertips here that I would get, and I don't want to need to go to um, a chemical to get it off. It's all right there in a the glove. Put it right there in the outgoing pile. So, I've got the piece on here. I've got a really great finish on it. People say, can I spray some accelerant on it? Sure you can. You can spray men's, uh, men's aftershave on it if you'd like. Well, you really don't need to. It's a done piece. I'm going to buff it a little bit with the scotch bright. And this is not really a scotch bright. It's a, it's a 3M product, but it's, and you get it at Vince's Wood Wonders. But it's going to just knock the haze off a little bit. Get this thing down really soft and smooth. And then that, that is really a great finish. I can put a little Renaissance wax on it and buff it a little bit. That's fine. Get it off the jig. This is the hard part. Get off the jig. Just like that. Now, my grandson doesn't play baseball yet. He will as soon as he finds a team to manage. Um, but he's got a little baseball bat, a little baseball bat for our ink pen. That's something and it's simple. It's a simple little project. I have a nickel's worth of wood from a guy that was one of the viewers and said, hey, you got to try this. And he sent me a nickel's worth of wood. Really great. Thank you so much. Then I went and got these Bic round stick pens. I made fun about Bic and all that stuff, but Bic, it's, it's easy, cheap. Walmart. Slides right into that 532nd and boom. You're there. How's that? Isn't that something? And you can do these. <sighs> Just that if I had to put all my time together when we had in this, I could have probably went soup to nuts and 
six minutes. It's not a timed event. But if you're thinking about, how are you going to do that? Yes, you can do that. Is it fun? Damn right it is. Will it teach you something? Well, I use my roughing gouge to get a basic shape, which people think a roughing gouge is for roughing. Nope. Then I got up my skew, and I put a final piece on it. Piece on it. Use the skew to put the little burns where I want to put the wire, and I made my wire bead out of a piece of uh, guitar wire. And then I used the bead tool I got from Dave at D-Way Tools to put a bead on the end of it. So it looks like a baseball bat, but you can do that with, a, with half a dozen other tools in the shop. But all these tools I played with, and I put a 10 cent refill in there, and that is ready. That's done. Done deal. This is not so cut and dry, it's easy peasy. A lazy man's project. I got to practice with a couple of my tools. I got to see how they cut. I fine tuned them. Start off with a sharpener, them, right? Okay. And I fine tuned it and learned how to get the cuts made right. That's the important thing is learn how to use a tool. I did a little embellishment. I did a little bead. I have a useful gift that if right now I'm going to go put this on the kitchen table. And if somebody picks up and says, oh, how nice, it go home in their pocket. It can. Or I can give them away. You know what that is? The refill stays in. You got a problem with the refill staying in. Put a drop of CA there to hold it, but they don't fall out. It's a nice, easy project for you. The reason he did it today is I personally believe that if you practice with your tools and learn exactly what that tool can do and how you do it best and where you get the finest cut, you will be turning out the finest work. I really believe I'm looking at some of the best in the world. I'd like to show you some pictures, but I got no pictures this week. I got no pictures. I didn't receive any photographs from you about the work you turned. So if you got a photograph, send it to me at EddieCastlin at gmail.com. Captain Eddie Castle at gmail.com. None of the other systems. Right? And I'll put the pictures up here to show you. Until next time. Oh, I don't want to be choking up. Batter up. I think that sign's thing. I think I gotta say. Making shavings. That's the one. Okay. Take care. Be good. Nice. So as a fine Mick, a team he can manage, he's going to love this. Oh, my grandson? He's not going to be a player. He's going to be a manager.